the All Elite Podcast. The All Elite Podcast. Covering all the latest news and results from the AEW. Wait a minute. Sean Spears. Shot right to the side of the head of Cody. This is pro wrestling analysis as you've never heard before. Deathly Hollows! Might be it. One, two, three, can save it! Coming to you every single week. So without any further delay, let's go all in and get the show started right now. Hello and welcome everybody to the AEW Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Perez, at Spots High on Twitter. Today, we are talking all things AEW. At time of recording today, it is about 24 hours away from All Out. And so there's a lot to discuss, a lot of different things leading into uh, possibly a revolution in wrestling. Something that might reshape the way that your Wednesday night goes, especially if you're a passionate wrestling fan like I am myself. So it's definitely an interesting time to be a wrestling fan, and especially a fan of the upstart AEW. So first things first, I want to jump right in and talk about the biggest thing to uh, happen coming into this pay-per-view, which is of course John Moxley being out with a staph infection uh, of the elbow. Uh, So that's something that he got while he was over in New Japan doing the G1 tournament, which if you haven't watched any of his matches there, definitely go check them out. I haven't gotten around to all of them myself, but I did catch the uh, match with Juice Robinson, which was fantastic. Some great ring psychology there and some definite definite heat amongst them in the way that they were brawling there it felt like a very very old school style that kind of captured what i what i like about john moxley pretty well so uh but him being out of all out i think that it can be somewhat of a a blessing in disguise here i think that it's something that will end up making more heat for the kenny omega feud uh if you've watched any of the the back and forth with them uh with their promos leading up to all out i definitely feel as if it's only added fuel to the fire with the way that kenny omega is delivering his promos and kind of calling out moxley saying oh it's just a boo-boo on your elbow kind of thing which is pretty interesting given their their dynamic you know it seems like kenny omega is playing the face and uh john moxley supposed to be playing the heel but it's kind of uh, an interesting sort of back and forth with the way aew has treated those roles so far so i think going forward that'll that'll continue to be a, a muddled line when it comes to the members of the elite being that they are kind of in the power of of the company there so it's sort of the uh, authoritative role that kind of gives you that extra ability to jump that line but going forward i i think we should jump right into the all out card and uh some predictions that i have going uh with that so jumping right in first up is the women's casino battle royal so this is going to have 21 competitors and Right off the bat, they are going back to the same uh, concept that they had with the Battle Royal at Double or Nothing, uh, where it's drawing uh, suits of cards, I believe, and uh, that will determine the entrance. Of course, you know, knowing that the entrants are predetermined, it's a little bit of a convoluted setup. I thought that was a little a little confusing and a little, uh, little more complex than it needed to be. Uh, but this will definitely end up being a interesting way to start off the card a very diverse set of competitors in this match up here so so far all the names that i could find anyway out of the 21 competitors that there are supposed to be 12 have been announced to my knowledge uh leaving nine spots left for some very interesting guest appearances some names that haven't been announced um you know could lead to some legends from the wwe as we've seen with one of the entrants who is of course jazz uh definitely interested to see how she looks after it's been a long time since i've last seen her wrestle uh you know back in the wwf days the attitude era women's division so that'll definitely be an interesting competitor to keep an eye on to see how how she looks um but going through the rest of the list here there is sadie gibbs uh shaza mckenzie awesome kong 
Eva Lee's Big Swall Ariel Monroe, Teal Piper, Yuka Sakazaki, Dr. Britt Baker, Allie, Nyla Rose, and Brandy Rhodes. So looking at that list, there's definitely some names that jump out to me more so than others, which is uh, you've got Dr. Britt Baker, who is definitely a high probability candidate for winning this. Uh, you've got Allie, who has so far had a good resurgence with her AEW run as opposed to her Impact run. Uh, and then you look also at Nyla Rose, who has been very dominant as well. And then Awesome Kong, who is always a dominant presence in any women's division that she's ever been a part of, whether it was you know WWE, Impact, and now AEW. So that's definitely a name that you always have to keep an eye out for. But the one who I think is going to end up taking this is actually Teal Piper. After watching some of the Being the Elite and seeing the way that she is carrying herself and the way she talks in her discussions about her dad, I feel like that's definitely going to be the one who they want to look for going forward. It could even be sort of their Charlotte Flair in a sense that she can... Uh, be that second generation star who has that instant name recognition and look at the success that Charlotte has had in the WWE. It could could very well end up being a similar story for the career of Teal Piper. And of course, the caveat of that is that the winner of this match does receive a women's title shot on TNT television, which is definitely a nice bonus. It definitely adds to not only having the kayfabe uh, want for victory, but also the want for victory for the sake of having that uh, women's title shot on television right off the bat will definitely put your name on the map when it comes to being in the AEW women's division. But moving up the card here, uh, the next matchup, which I'm very excited for, is going to be Private Party versus Angelico and Jack Evans. And I actually had a little bit of a discussion last night with Jack Evans back and forth. He was uh, trying to put the green and green team in Chicago and was looking for somebody to deliver on that. And I jokingly sent him a message uh, on there saying that I would be heading to Chicago about a 12 and a half hour drive at about 11 o'clock at night so that was a little interesting back and forth especially to have with somebody who I've watched for quite a long time I remember when he had the Eminem gimmick back in ROH and just always doing uh, such gifable moves in the ring it's just insane to see the things that he does and the way that he he delivers and sells the moves that he he receives as well he's just a in my opinion a very underrated performer and somebody that I've been a fan of for a long time and looking at also private party and the amazing outpouring of support that they've had in the and rightfully so after their match with SCU and the best friends at Fighter Fest and I think that they are definitely someone to keep an eye on in this tag division although they're young and they're going to still be developing in terms of their on-screen presence uh their in-ring presence as is miles beyond what you would expect from from somebody coming into this already loaded tag team division and able to make a name for themselves against you know christopher daniels uh, it's just insane to me the the things that they were doing inside of that ring that night. Um, so I think that'll be a uh, sneak option for match of the night. Not my particular pick, but definitely high up there on the chance of being match of the night, which you could say about a lot of things on this card, which is just so impressive with the way they booked this from, from top to bottom. Um, but I definitely think that my pick for this will be the private party. I think that Jack Evans and Angelico are being used in kind of an enhancement sense right now. If you look at the records, they've had a couple of losses so far. I don't even think they've, I think they've yet to pick up their win in AEW. Uh, so I think that they'll be putting over private party here, which will be a smart decision. But I, I definitely would like to see Angelico and Jack Evans get their first win sometime in the near future, uh, maybe on TNT. Uh, But moving up the card here, the next matchup is going to be another favorite of mine here. uh, Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, and Marco Stunt versus SCU. Uh, So that'll be an interesting uh, trios match 
as Scorpio Sky called it on uh, being the elite. I think that'll definitely be a very interesting matchup. You know, the way that they uh, played with Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, and Marco Stunt in their matchup with the the Dark Order and Angelico, or Angelico rather, and Jack Evans, I think that that will definitely be a similar uh, exhibition in this matchup. And when Luchasaurus got the hot dag in that match, the pop that the crowd had was just insane. The way that he's gone from... Um, you know, being possibly part of the Wyatt family a while back to now being included in uh, one of the biggest upstart promotions and probably going to be one of their biggest stars with the reception that he's gotten so far and damn good for it. I mean, the way that he's thrown in those kicks and it, it's just so unique to see a big man doing standing moonsaults and throwing kicks out there. It's He's got a very unique move set, and I think that'll play to the advantage of also having a, a unique gimmick and the way that he's handled things with being the elite and uh, carrying around Jungle Boy. and it, It's just been a very interesting ride so far, and I think they'll end up using uh, Marco Stunt kind of as a stunt man, ironically, and uh, throwing him around the ring and throwing him around at uh, all the members of SCU and you know Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, Scorpio Sky. None of them ever know how to have a bad match, so they'll go out there and they'll have an insane cop uh, contest. You know, throwing out all sorts of flips and uh, fast-paced action. It'll be a very exciting match to watch for sure. And I expect out of that matchup to see Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, and Marco Stunt end up taking the victory there. It just makes sense with the way they're booking things and the reception that Luchasaurus has gotten so far. I think that it's just the the right move to make at this time, and I think they really need to push them forward in that division. Um, uh, the tag team division and show that they're going to be a force and that'll definitely make the fans happy and that's really what all AEW is about isn't it you know being for the fans and listening to them and knowing how to react to their reactions and things like that it always seems like they're kind of one step ahead and I think that you know looking at the card from from the top down you can see that and with the with the next match up here, it's going to be Riho versus Hikaru Shida. And I definitely think that they've both had a very good start so far uh, to their careers in AEW. With Rio having the matchup with Yuka and Nyla. And the way that they played that with you know having the triple threat. And them both wanting to go after Nyla because she was kind of the monster in the situation. That was definitely played very smart. Their selling in that was fantastic. And the way they really made it feel like... Nyla was unstoppable. It really sold it perfectly and made the crowd get into it. And I think that Hikaru Shida also had a good matchup with uh, defeating Aja, Yuka, and Emi as well. So that'll definitely be an interesting contest, a good uh, Joshi wrestling exhibition. And I expect that Riho will probably end up taking the win in that contest. And as you... Um, see with the way that they've competed so far i definitely think that they're both going to have a very good future in aew and you know it just shows how much diversity there is in the product of aew with the types of matches that they're putting on their card it's just got a little bit of something for everybody and i think that'll really be the the motto of them going forward and then you look at the next matchup and you've got the best friends versus the Dark Order with the winners earning a first round bye in the tag title tournament. So I think this matchup will definitely be a more traditional tag team contest. Uh, the way the Dark Order handled their matchup with SCU and, and Helico and Jack Evans, it definitely showed that they've got some interesting moves in their moveset as well. The senton from Evil Uno was definitely a great moment. Got the crowd going after a little bit of a slow start to that matchup, but still ended up being a fantastic contest and really showed towards the end what they were all capable of when they kind of quickened the pace and got a little more into it there. But the best friends have an undefeated record going into this. I mean, the contests that they've had so far have 
been really technically savvy in terms of the way that they they tag together and the way that they have a chemistry in the ring you know it, it shows in the name the best friends exactly the type of, of camaraderie that they have inside of the ring so i think that they will end up putting up a good fight but ultimately i think that the dark order will end up taking this one simply because they've had the you know shutting off the lights bits and everything like that it just kind of points to the fact that they're wanting to um, enhance them and, and show that they're going to be something to be feared and having all the henchmen, I forget what they're what they're trying to call them, but it's funny how, you know, the best friends have called them the the perverts and it's been a, a good back and forth on their part, but I think ultimately that they kind of have to take the loss to the Dark Order to sell them as the omnipotent you know scary presence inside of aew so that'll definitely be a contest to watch as well in terms of tag team action which i think is just a fantastic thing that aew is doing in general with their division there where there's so much talent and so much good teams that are just coming together to make a very polished product inside of the ring when everything is all said and done and it just really shows to the signings that they've had in All Elite Wrestling and Cody Rhodes and, and all of the elite definitely know what they're doing in terms of the way they book things and the way they give the fans what they're looking for in their, their unique product, which definitely speaks to the next matchup on the card as well, which I am actually picking for my match of the night which is Joey Janela versus Jimmy Havoc versus Darby Allen. So this matchup is going to probably end up being a no disqualification match or at least turning into a brawl that's unsanctioned, as they called it with the Joey Janela john Moxley matchup. But I think that it'll ultimately be a, a better exhibition of their talents, especially for you know Jimmy Havoc, who's a deathmatch specialist, having him able to access some of those uh you know toys so to speak with the with the weaponry it'll definitely make it for a more interesting contest and the way that you know all of them have shown out so far you know you had Joey Janela versus John Moxley which was a grueling amazing contest it was just so back and forth and so well sold by both individuals and the things that they were willing to do you know having Janela's boot all covered in the thumbtacks and it and Moxley spitting out a thumbtack as he slammed him down it was just a very very well done and very um painful looking matchup it looked like the, there's no way that you can and take thumbtacks and and barbed wire and things like that and have it not hurt so it really just envelops you and and really shows how much these guys are willing to give into the product that they're creating so that was definitely a matchup that that really helped me fall in love with the AEW product and i think that'll end up being kind of similar to what you're going to see with the uh pairing of joey janela Jimmy Havoc and Darby Allen, and also I just want to speak to the great old school booking style build up that they've had to this matchup with the falling out in that um, three man tag match that they had all together as teammates against MJF and them, and I think that that was a really smart, you know, old school way that Cody Rhodes has definitely learned from watching his his father and. It was very simplistic, but it made for a great build-up to what should end up being the match of the night, as I stated before. And another good possible candidate for that that will definitely feature uh, some weaponry is the AAA Tag Team Championship match, the ladder match between the Lucha Bros and the Young Bucks. So expect a lot of super kicks, of course, you know, expect some uh, some of that. And I, I definitely think this is a great candidate for match of the night as well. You know, not my particular pick, but I just think that it, it's going to definitely rival up there with one of the top ones of the night. You know, the Young Bucks always come out and, and perform well when they're going up against the Lucha Bros. Everything that they do together, it's just they have a great ring psychology, both teams, and they're just so well-timed. You know, they have the unison super kicks, and it, it's just 
great chemistry in the ring and it, it just shows in the match quality and I think that this will end up being an insane contest you know in their words it's going to be the greatest ladder match ever uh, in the history of ladder matches according to the Young Bucks so I think this will definitely be a very competitive contest back and forth but I think ultimately the Young Bucks will end up winning this and that will give the Lucha Bros a reason to come back and face them perhaps on AEW television as I think that it's kind of reached the peak of what it's going to do on pay-per-views at this point unless they want to keep uh you know building a feud once they do get to television and things like that it's just at this point it's a little a little hard to build on something where it's just rematch after rematch without having a a story behind it uh, so I think that'll definitely be something that can be developed, but I think you'll probably see them moving on to some different tag teams. You know, the Young Bucks versus Private Party. You know, they kind of gave them their uh, rub when they were leaving the independent scene on one of those episodes of Being the Elite. So that'll definitely be something to look forward to, I think, and that'll give them a little bit more diversity. And then they can come back to having that matchup with the Lucha Bros sometime in the future. Uh, but the next matchup is featuring Sean Spears, the chairman of AEW, as he likes to refer to himself now as, and Cody Rhodes, or, you know, just Cody, I suppose he's going by now, but looking at these two, they obviously have the history of the chair shot, as you can hear in the intro of this podcast, you know, that was a moment a lot of people disliked in terms of the way they handled that you know they thought they should have been a little more sensitive to chair shots to the head and not doing those sort of things but I really think it speaks to the way that Cody Rhodes is willing to put everything on the line for his product and the way that he took that chair shot was kind of meant meant to be a a martyrish kind of gesture in the sense that he's going to do that but Probably no one else in AEW will ever get struck with a chair to the head unprotected like that again. It was just kind of meant to be a one-off spot that showed that he was willing to do whatever it took to deliver the product that he remembered from a sort of forgotten era. You know, that attitude era where you would see The Rock hitting mankind or with chairs relentlessly and to the head and just the shots that you would see on a nightly basis practically were insane and of course you had ECW where the Dudleys probably you know decreased their careers by quite a few years with the chair shots they were taking there so I think that was meant to kind of call back to an era that a lot of people who are interested in this product were big fans of so that was a smart play in my book Cody. Uh, But I think that this matchup will be very heated. Uh, It could very well end up being another contest that ends up being a no disqualification. Uh, Given the history and given the weapons used so far, that'll definitely be a direction they could go in. But I think ultimately uh, one of the interesting things that hasn't been talked about a whole lot outside of their uh, social media is the you know, use of having Tully Blanchard on the side and uh, Cody having the availability to also have someone of his choice at ringside. One person a piece essentially allowed per competitor. That was something that was uh, brought up in the quote unquote contract signing uh, that they had with Sean Spears. And I think this will play very interestingly into the matchup. Uh, You know, you saw with Marco Stunt getting involved in that one matchup, they're not exactly calling DQs um, by the book like they do in the WWE. So I think you'll see a little bit of involvement from whoever is on the outside for Cody and maybe getting uh, involved with, uh, you know, Tully Blanchard and, and Sean Spears. So I think ultimately, though, the way that they built this matchup and the way that they've kind of shown Cody sacrificing himself with the chair shot. I think that he will kind of also sacrifice himself by giving the win to Sean Spears here. I think that'll kind of go against the 
idea that the elite is going to be winning all of their matchups because of the fact that they're in control of this company so that'll definitely be the way that this matchup will go in my book it's the smartest way to book it in my opinion because then you end up having sean spears having that victory over cody you know maybe a relentless sort of beat down at the end to really sell the fact that sean spears is going to be this ultra heel and it'll kind of go against everything that people were complaining about with having a roster filled with people who were going to be in the, you know, uh, quote unquote ownership group or whatever you'd like to call it of the way the power structure is with the elite. So I think that'll be ultimately the best decision in terms of pleasing those naysayers and also making Sean Spears look the absolute best he can as a top guy, not just a good hand. Uh, But moving on now to another member of the elite, of course, you know, we've got the matchup with Kenny Omega versus Pac now instead of having John Moxley in that spot. And this matchup will probably be Kenny Omega's best match in AEW so far. Some people have complained that they haven't seen him get to the same level that he did in New Japan. And... But I have to say that the matches I have seen of Kenny Omega, it's been phenomenal. So, you know, saying that doing something great instead of, uh, or good rather than great, it's kind of nitpicking at something that is a absolute great artistry that is going on in front of them. So I think that Kenny Omega will end up taking this just for the simple fact that Pac is the newer competitor out of the two. But I think that Pac will end up showing out quite a bit after he didn't appear at the other pay-per-view. You know, they kind of joked a little bit about that, how he didn't show and how they weren't sure if they should call him when it came time for making the replacement on being the elite. So I think that ultimately Pac will end up taking the loss here just for the simple fact that he didn't appear at the other pay-per-view. He hasn't gotten into the groove of things yet, and having a loss on his record will hurt a lot less than Kenny Omega having another loss on his. So I think that with Kenny Omega losing to Chris Jericho, that was definitely a move where you needed to regain some of the momentum for Kenny Omega to establish him as a main event sort of caliber person in your promotion. So I think that's what you'll end up seeing here. You'll see a main event quality bout. Even though John Moxley is not gracing that matchup, it'll still have the star power to really show off, you know, the ex Neville uh, Pac, you know, really letting him show out and do some of the amazing things that he probably was very limited to uh, with the limited time that they had in 205 Live, and it's just an abandoned show over there. So I think that given the time that they will probably be given, it'll either end up being a, a draw between the two if it does have a time limit or having Kenny Omega win this matchup and it'll be a match that will put them both over and probably end up being a five-star match quality and I think that that will continue to be a trend with Kenny Omega's matches going forward given the criticism that he's gotten I think that he really wants to show out and show that he is bringing the quality of wrestling that he brought to New Japan to AEW. And of course, now we are getting to the main event, the AEW World Championship match, the first one to be crowned the AEW World Champion. It'll definitely be a a very interesting battle between Chris Jericho and Hangman Adam Page. This will be a matchup that a lot of people have been looking forward to for a long time for Adam Page. You know, he had so much momentum coming into AEW and so much hype behind his name. And winning the Casino Battle Royal kind of came as a shock for some people. Some people thought that originally it was going to be Pac who was put in that position. And it was kind of switched to Adam Page afterwards. So I don't think that's a bad consolation prize by any book. And I think that Adam Page will end up putting on one of the better performances of performances rather of his career against Chris Jericho who 
also has been criticized a little bit for not uh, having the New Japan quality matches inside of an AEW ring so far. And I think that he will also really show out in this contest as well and be in prime shape and will probably end up taking the AEW World Championship title the first time around. Because I think it makes the most sense. You know, you look at the way that he had such a long career with WWE and put on some amazing matches inside of the Tokyo Dome. And it it just speaks to the fact that he is not done in this industry. And a lot of the buildup with the uh, being the elite has shown that he's saying basically that if Adam Page wins, that's the end of Chris Jericho. That's the beginning of the end for a career that has lasted so very long. And I don't think that that is going to be something that AEW wants to go with right off the bat. I think they want to keep Chris Jericho feeling like the legend that he is. And ultimately, he will end up taking the belt so that he can put some name recognition onto that belt right off the bat and put a kind of shocking headline on the title for anybody who may not be... uh, too invested in terms of who's in it and things like that and that will definitely be a name that will grab people's eyes in time for TNT you know I think that he'll definitely be looking for his thank you even more at that point if he does end up with that belt around his waist and I think that'll definitely lead to some great television on TNT with whoever ends up being the first person to go after that title after this match But all in all, this card looks absolutely stacked from top to bottom. You could pick any of these matches and say that's going to be match of the night, and I wouldn't sit there and argue with you. There's so much of a case to make for any of these contests being uh, five-star matches. You know, it'll definitely be a night to remember, and I'm very excited to be kicking off this podcast with presenting this pay-per-view, and it couldn't be a better time to be a wrestling fan, couldn't be a better time to be starting off this podcast, and I just really appreciate anybody who has given this a listen. Like I said, my name is Zach Perez. You can find me at Spots High on Twitter, and for now, I am signing off for the first edition of the AEW Podcast. But until next time, goodbye and good night. Goodbye and good night. Goodbye and good night. Goodbye and good night.